can you see that programme again? You bet your cotton socks you can, because that gets Children's ITV underway at four o'clock today. And the other uh, goodies lined up for you, there's Will Quack Quack, he's a naughty duck. Stanley Bagshaw will be having one of his amazing adventures. There's your letters in first post. There's Murphy's Mob as well. We'll keep you busy later, starting at four. Strong flavoured cheese. Mm. 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 It's lovely. Mm. Do you know what would go well with this? Mm. Pickled onions. Oh, yes! <laughs> I like pickled onions! <laughs> yes, well, you're in luck. I bought some yesterday. Good. We'll open a jar. <laughs> if you don't hurry up, Stephen, your salad will get cold. Yes, I know, Mook. What do you mean the salad's cold already? I'm not surprised. It's taking you ages to find the pickles. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Very funny. Here we are. <laughs> Hurry up, Stephen. <coughs> I can't get the lid off. Oh, let me try. Yeah. Yeah. Takes a man to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, come on then. No, no. I can't do it. I'm not strong enough. Neither are you. I am strong. Well, you're not strong enough to get the lid off the pickle jar. <laughs> well, must be stuck. We'll have to do without the pickles. I'm just giving you some. Me, Patsy. Oh, come through, Patsy. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I didn't know you were having your lunch. I'll come back later. No, it doesn't matter, Patsy. We've nearly finished, haven't we, Moonga? Oh. I haven't. I could eat lots more. Well, I've nearly finished anyway. Mm. Look, I wonder if you could do me a favour, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Are you feeling strong? <laughs> Did I say something funny? No, Patsy. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Well, the delivery men have left a heavy box in the yard. And you'd like me to carry it up the steps for oh, you. Yes, please. It's ever so heavy and I just can't lift it. <laughs> I'll do it for you, Batsy. Oh, <coughs> Feel those. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Look, I'll come and help you carry it. No, no, no don't you worry. Oh. Don't you worry. You sit down here. Make oh, yourself right. at home. Right. I'll manage on my own. Oh, but, Stephen, it's ever so heavy. Oh, oh, Stephen can do it, Patsy. He's very strong, you know. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Mooncat. I won't be long. All right. <laughs> Patsy, yes. you may be too weak to lift heavy boxes, but I know one of your strong points. What's that? <laughs> Telling stories. All right. Where's the storybook? It's in the shop. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Strongest man of all I've got muscles that rise and fall I can lift weights I can wrestle with bears And carry heavy boxes up the stairs Oh, heave, ho, grunt, groan One, two, and three, four
There's nothing on earth that I can't lift So one little box I'll easily shift With my teeth I pull lorries that weigh two tons And I feed on a diet of cheese and pickled onions He ho grunt grow When I can pull off the lid I'm gonna get this box to the top of the stair If it's the last thing I ever do, I don't care With a snort and a heave and a fierce-looking frown And I'm not gonna rest till I get it in the door to carry a pile of books. Oh, good. <laughs> Here's the story book. Oh, oh good. Well, oh, oh, now we can have the story. Yes, we can. Yeah. Oh, well, I never... Yeah. What is it? Uh -uh. Well, now, one night, yeah. there was a dreadful storm. <gasps> George heard the wind howling as he lay in bed. In the morning, when he went into the yard, he saw that part of the rabbit hutch roof had blown away. The wind was still howling, and it was raining. His rabbit was getting wet. George and his mother covered the roof with a sheet of plastic. George held it down, while his mother put a stone on each of the four corners. But the wind blew under the plastic and made it into a little tent. The stones fell off the roof, bonk, clonk, to the ground. George's mother said, Let's move the hatch to a dry place until the roof is mended. She stood at one end of the hutch and George stood at the other. They cried, One, two, three, lift! All together now and up she comes! But George couldn't lift his end. You're just not strong enough, George, said his mother. Yes, I am, said George. The hatch is heavier at my end. The rabbit is sitting here. So George and his mother changed ends. They said, one, two, three, and up she comes. But George's end of the hutch scarcely moved at all. You're just not strong enough, George. George's mother lifted her end up quite a lot. The rabbit slid along his floor and landed bump against the wall which made him cross as well as wet. He stopped eating his cabbage leaves and pressed his nose against the wire netting and looked at George, who said, I'll take you somewhere warm and dry. George opened the door and lifted him out. The rabbit was big and heavy, and he was surprised to find himself suddenly being carried across the yard in the wind and rain. He scrambled wildly up onto George's shoulder, but he slid down again. George almost dropped him. Hold on tight, cried George's mother. George held on as tight as he could, but it wasn't easy to carry a heavy weight. It's even harder when the thing you are carrying won't stay in one place. It's very hard indeed, carrying a strong, wet, angry rabbit, said George. But George was even stronger than the rabbit and he held on tight until he carried him all the way across the yard and into the warm, dry porch. <laughs> well, George was strong enough to carry the rabbit. Yes. I wonder if Stephen's strong enough to carry that box. <laughs> I wonder. Oh, here come the bottles, man. Stephen, did you manage to carry that box up the steps? Oh, thank you. I feel very... 
week. Oh, you look worn out. Oh, come on, you come and sit down. Oh, dear. Stephen, now you just sit down there and I'll make you a nice cup of tea. Oh, thanks, Batsy. I uh, didn't finish all my cheese, Stephen. Would you like some more? It'll make you big and strong. Yes, ha, ha, ha. Uh, You might like a pickled onion as well. Thank you very much. Do you like pickled onions? Yes. Oh, I love them. Yes. Shall we have one? Well, we couldn't get the lid off the... Oh, what? Do that again, Patsy. Do what? Take the lid off the pickle jar. If you like. Oh, That's you amazing. must be very big and strong. Well, I only took the lid off the jar. Well, Mooncat and I couldn't get it off. We thought it was stuck. Well, all it needs is a little twist. It's quite easy, really. Oh, is that all? Oh, good. Good. Now we can yeah, have you yeah, take try that. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Mm. Yeah. Oh, oh, what I feel yeah. like. Mm. 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 Make me strong again. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah, strong. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, that's the time. Mm. God, I can't stop to have a cup of tea with you. I must laugh. Oh, mm. all right. Thanks, Stephen, for bringing that box in for me. No, oh, not at all. Thanks for opening the jar of pickled onions. Right. Uh, uh, I didn't get a pickled onion, Stephen. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry, Mooncat. Did you want one? Yes, I did. Coming up. Stephen, <coughs> if you're strong enough to carry a heavy box, you must be strong enough to open that jar. Of course I am. <coughs> now, remember what Patsy says. It just needs a little twist. Yeah. Just a little <coughs> twist. <coughs> Mooncat, I know how we can get this lid off. How? We need someone very, very strong. Yes. Someone with uh, very big muscles. Yes. Someone who isn't in the slightest bit weak. Yes. Patsy! Patsy! You called? <clears throat> oh. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> we've got just the song for you, Patsy. Oh. She is the strongest one of all. She's got muscles that rise and fall. She's the strongest flower seller on our street. And she's world champion pickled and you need to heat. Oh, grunt, groan. I am the strongest cat I know. Other cats look at me whenever I go. I'm the finest cat that they've ever seen. And I'm the only cat they've ever seen. That's great. Heat. Oh, grunt, groan. One, two, three, four, crunch. In my shop there are all sorts of flowers. I sell, and some of those flowers have a very strong smell, but I've never seen a flower bend an iron bar, or even take the lid off a pickled onion jar. Oh, <laughs> ho, grunt, groan, 25p for a bunch. <laughs> 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 this afternoon, drama in Australia with the Sullivans. Great artists will love these new Conti painting pencils. Look, they're colouring pencils, but if you dip them in water, you can paint! It's such fun with Conti painting pencils. On arrival on planet Earth, Eric, you'll be astonished to find they don't understand a word you say. Fortunately, CBS Child Guidance Toys easily overcome this minor setback. Communication becomes a doddle, as you discover the natives are indeed friendly and easily amused. 
Soon you will converse on matters of great importance. So make contact, Eric, with Child Guidance Toys from CBS. The Clarol Power Dryer. Surprisingly quiet, yet with all the power to blow a hurricane of volume into your hair. Do you know, the first time I saw this thing, I thought it was a face. But when I got older, I thought, hang on, this ain't a face, it's a dog. Next, I thought it was a telephone. I felt a right nana when I found out it was really a petrol pump. And this wasn't an ice cream, it was a telescope. Fisher Price. Toys that never cease to amaze. Fisher Price announced sound equipment with bashable cases, built in microphones, chunky buttons, and automatic turntables that sound like the equipment kids aren't usually allowed to touch. Fisher Price, equipment that grown ups may not be allowed to touch. Where else can you find out what Jimmy Tarbuck's wildest dream is? What Jacqueline Bissett feels about being 40? Shaking Stevens' big secret? How Christopher Biggins got the surprise of his life? Why the dwarf mongoose is henpecked? Coronation Street's new hairstyles? Why a baby went sailing in the Pacific? Or where to book a bargain tropical cruise? Plus over 200 hours of entertainment on ITV and Channel 4. Where else but in the 100 pages of TV Times? There's so much more than TV Times in this week's TV Times. Nobody likes to think about dying, but I never forget that it was somebody that died, that signed a donor card that enabled me to live a full life and to have it. You know, Jack, we should carry donor cards. Yes. Thousands of people now carry donor cards, but many life-saving transplant operations don't take place because relatives are unaware of the wishes of a would-be donor. Perhaps someone in your family carries a donor card, but do you know about it? I was just saying, we ought to carry donor cards. Do already. Look. Have you discussed it with them? Because in the event of their death, you might be the one to have to make the decision. And it's not something you'll feel like discussing when they've just died. So talk about it now. Good for you. I didn't know you had one already. Yes. Make sure you know who carries the card in your family. Tonight at 7, The Krypton Factor. Only four contestants remain to face the challenge of the final. World top batsman Viv Richards presents the trophy. All have the strength and swiftness to take on the assault course. All have the quick responses to beat the tests of mental and manual agility. But only one has the winning ingredient. The Krypton Factor final is tonight at 7 on Thames. I'll tell you, it's a little daunting seeing all those superhuman people. We've got drama lined up for you this afternoon at 1.30, a touch of sour group, grapes, that's in Falcon Crest. Then later in the afternoon, let's take the high road of three sons and daughters at half past three. But now the Sullivans await you.